hey, this is Tim Pierce. That solo was just for fun. What this is about is basically what I've done as my job for 35 years, which is come up with parts and sounds as a studio guitarist. Any studio guitarist has to come up with this stuff immediately and hopefully can make the song bigger, uh, more glorious, deeper, whatever the artist wants. And you have to be able to switch gears very quickly. If, if you do something and they don't want it uh, or they want something different, you have to adapt really quickly. So that's where the demands are. So often the music is very simple, but the actual job of doing these parts and sounds is anything but simple. This is an excerpt from the online masterclass. We're up to over a thousand videos and over a hundred hours of content. Click the link below if you want to check it out. Here's the octave up overdub using my Digitech Whammy and my Echo Park Delay. Now the reason I can get away with such an affected sound is because I'm basically doubling, for the most part, the part I played an octave lower. So that part is clearer, and even though this part is crazy full of delay and the whammy of chorus, the other part gives it definition. And indeed on the end here where I break away and do this new melody, I overdub another cleaner guitar playing those notes to add definition to it. So you don't really hear that guitar, but it makes makes the notes clearer and kind of relieves the fact that some of these effects are way over the top. Also, I have the very heavy repeat on the Echo Park line, Six Echo Park. Not that heavy, but uh, almost that heavy. So I'm playing the riff up here, and I don't have to mute it because this is a different vibe. I... I'm playing it very open so that you get all the glitchiness. I mean, it's desire... the way this thing glitches is desirable. And then even this is desirable. Where I rejected using it down here, up here, when the notes blend together, they create a really nice glitchy, uh, random thing. And then I found an open string. was kind of a rude and raw way to approach that. You know, the, the thing is the whammy just creates so much good noise. It, it's almost the more irreverent you are, the better. So I do everything as kind of an octave double, except at the end, I break into a new melody. So it's a brand new corner. And as I mentioned earlier, the way that I bolster that is by turning off the whammy turning off the delay and doing a cleaner double of it. Well, I will turn off the delay. See, by adding that underneath, it strength, strengthens this deviation from melody. And I always like to, I always like to do different corners. I love the repetition, but I also love the surprise of doing different corners and different endings to phrases. So I have this whammy pedal set an octave up. And as I said, it's a vintage one. It just sounds a little darker and grainier. The new ones sound great. I almost prefer the sound of a new one to an old one. So there's really no limitation. You can go buy one at the store and, and get this sound. Um, it's great against reverb. And the more reverb, the better in some ways, because these glitches are so musical. Thing that happens, it's just beautiful. I remember there was a Radiohead record where I kind of heard this thing done for the first time. I'm sure, I'm sure it was done before then, but it's not just an octave pedal, it's the, the uh, way chordal stuff blends together is really a wonderful thing. So I'm way up here at fret 17, and as I said, I, I play it wide open, there's no muting. And then I was able to make this choice because the, gl the glitches sounded great. Rather than going, I was able to do the thing I chose not to do down here. 
And then I found stabbing away at one string was a great way to do this arpeggio. Instead of doing this, Although maybe I should have done that, it's because it all blends together really nice, but I went. And against the other one, it was a nice blend. Now remember, the other guitar is an octave lower, clearer, more traditional, doing the same thing. So together, they create a powerful sound that just, it does sound like one guitar most of the time, just one big, you know, layered guitar. I'm just walking down 10, 9, 7, 5, 3, 2. And the attitude with that is I feel like I'm stabbing at it, and that's a good thing for this. Back to the top. And then I want a change in melody. And that's basically, I'm saying G minor, C. I'm basically doing G minor, then C sus to C, and then G minor again, but doing it in a melody form. Basically. Let's talk about the composition of this, because this is what I got paid to do my entire career, is come up with parts like this. And I think it's important to look at the structure of something like this to see why it works. First of all, I leave a breath, and I don't play on the downbeat. The band comes in. You know, and the other thing is, this is a contrast. The main part is eighths. It's tight. It's constant. The part I added floats over it. It has broken elements to it. It has spaces. It's, it's legato. It has arpeggios. So it's an opposite thing. I often talk about a boxer, two boxers going to different corners of a ring. And that's how I look at guitar parts sometimes. You want to go to the opposite place sometimes. So I don't play on the downbeat. Two, three, four, one. Second phrase is the same thing. So open downbeat, play three notes. Open downbeat, play three notes. And then I go into a syncopated arpeggio. And I'm stating the chord very clearly. It's C sus to C, and then C2, and then I keep walking down. And then I repeat, and that's a very important part of a composition too. You want to repeat stuff. And then on this guitar part, I start the same, but I'm doing the G drone. So compositionally, I'm giving a fresh turn to it. Now, when I do the next overdub, there's a new fresh turn, which is this melody up here. And once again, legato playing with spaces, broken phrases, against a tight eighth part, opposites. <laughs> 